Um, anyhow, I, I, hopefully this won't this won't go too long for you. I mean, it's I, I don't know if you've seen the other reviews, but it's pretty much um, you know like thirty minutes of, of if not of talking. So um, well, yeah, but I think I'm. I might have started the trend of talking too long <laughs> <in> the first <laughs> of all. It's all your fault. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's more than fine. Like I said, I dig it. I, this is, there's nothing better than to talk about the game and the stuff that um, no, just gets me all geeky, you know, like thinking of these different things. So, um, but... So it'll be pretty straightforward. I, you know, I, I started recording, so I probably will just just keep going and maybe maybe just sort of give a brief. I'm on vacation, so just chilling out on a deck and 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 enjoying this. And you know, the the season fast approaching. I um I uh you know, there's no rest for the weary. So I gotta. You know, I got a fans to keep happy, you know, YouTube happy. <laughs> so I got to create all this content. So that's that's where you come in because you're a lot more interesting than me. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> all right. So, you know, um, so I guess my, my the first question I'll ask is when, when when is it that your guys report if they haven't done so already? They'll, they'll show up the 17th. Uh, we'll go through a lot of administrative stuff on the 18th, physicals and that stuff. And uh, and then we're able to train on the 19th. Yeah. So what, next fr- Friday? Uh, this Friday? Yeah. 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 Um, I think I- most people, everybody who has a game on the first. Yeah. That that should be when they're able to start. If they yeah. If they're starting during the weekend because the first is a Thursday. If they start yeah. uh, Saturday, then they're going to have to wait uh, one or two days, I think. Uh-huh. Um, so I, I've applied to Johns Hopkins, you know, and unfortunately I have not heard back yet. So I'm not, I don't think it's too good that I'll be showing up for preseason. But, you know, don't let that stop you. I think you should continue on. You know, I'll be okay. the ringer. I'll be the ringer if, if, if I can get in. You know, well, yeah, yeah, we'll wait. We'll be patient. Right. Wait for that acceptance to come in. <laughs> so why? <laughs> Very. Um, hey, so what does that? What What does your first day of training look like? Like, how much do you play? Do you, um, you know, do you play, or are you like a fitness fanatic guy? Uh, I, I mean, I believe heavily in fitness, but uh, I. I I used to be old school uh, where, you know, well, I did it when I I was young, so you guys can (laughs) handle it. Uh, You suffer. (laughs) Yeah. And so I used to run three a days and we would, we would uh, work uh, technical stuff at the beginning and then we'd come back and do tactical stuff and then we'd play. Um, But, uh, I've kind of graduated out of that. I want to be more efficient and combine all that stuff together. Uh, Cause I, I do believe in kind of get in and get out. So I, I would typically don't go over an hour and a half for training sessions. I don't want them to feel like, Oh, I'm tired. I don't want to go out to practice. I want them to be energized and come out and like uh, learn new things and pick up new tools to be able to utilize in the game. Um, and be energized to go. So I think we take more day. I, I I'd be surprised if anybody takes more days off than than we do in the preseason. I just we work really hard, and then I give them recovery time. Then we work hard. So we're usually two days on, one day off through through the preseason, which is tight because we don't have very many days. But I, I also want to make sure everybody is fresh and not prone to injury and that we arrived to the first game in peak peak uh, status instead of uh, mm-hmm. what in my early, early years, the guys that came in really, really fit could handle it, but may not have been, mm-hmm. you know, peaking at a hundred percent on the first game. 
that were per, uh, probably compromised by at least 10%. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to make sure we're, we're, you know, as close to 100% fit, fresh, and ready to go when we play Rowan. Uh, yeah. So that's important to me. Uh, the concepts, uh, I, I, I remember, I, I take a lesson from um, when I took this fencing class my freshman year, and everybody wanted to get the, you know, swinging those fencing swords around. <laughs> we, we, we didn't touch those things for the first week. We, it was just footwork. <laughs> it was basic yeah. skills. Yeah. Uh, and if you move too fast, too early, you miss a lot of concepts. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll start uh, making sure and we've got a, a good number of new guys in and they're all going to play. Um, so it's important that we don't skip any steps and miss any any points of, th- that they need to know to be able to do our system. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll start kind of slow in uh, like 2v1 stuff uh, and then put those 2v1s in certain parts of the – and build that to 3v2s and stuff like that and build and, and give them the tools to be successful in those components, which you think, well, it's 2v1. They, they should have the tools. Well, yeah. I, mm. I would go – to add to that, <laughs> I go to, like, in Pep Confidentially, he says that the Byron guys, which included Ribery and Robin yeah. and Lamb, they didn't know how to do rondos. Yeah. And those were world class players. So, yeah. if you think you know how to do two v one, then you better do it and never give up the ball. Yeah. And then I'd say, and, okay. Yeah. But if you give up the ball, then then maybe yeah. we have something to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting that what you said about oh, you used to do the fitness early when well when you were when you were playing, and I was the same way, and. I, I come to believe now it's more harmful than good to do a preseason that is fitness heavy because I remember going into our the first game, you know, feeling like I got hit by a by a truck and I would always show up in 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 shape and I'm a goalkeeper too so it wasn't like I was doing so much <laughs> running but I would right. just feel like beaten down already from two weeks of preseason so and right and like you said i think what got overlooked at that time was there was a way to play and how do you play that way and that's a lot more important than hey can you you know are you 80 percent fit or 85 percent fit so. right i i mean we want we want all of that i think our culture is is the best it's ever been and hopefully i keep saying that every year mm-hmm. uh but our spring was the best spring. The guys showed up uh, more prepared, more fit than I've ever seen a Hopkins team in the spring. So uh, we made real good grounds in the spring. Um, and hopefully they show up and are ready this fall. I have, you know, I'm optimistic about it given the evidence I saw in the spring. Uh, but yeah, the culture kind of dictates where you start. And uh, yeah. there's some D3 teams that you can take advantage of early in the season if you show mm-hmm. up with a strong yeah. culture and everybody expects, yeah. you know, yeah. success. Yeah. Well, I think, too, right, like the that carries you through a lot, right? Like if you are, like you said, strong on culture, that carries you through a lot of things that otherwise players of old – probably wouldn't necessarily get carried through like playing with some pride and all those things that sort of give you a little bit of extra juice when you just need it. So, Hey, let me, so it's, so, you know, you're three days away from people showing up. Like what, um, I'm obviously recording this and it's going to be memorialized so I can beat you over the head with it at the end of the season. But what sort of, early expectations do you have for for the fall and sort of what you're what you're hoping to accomplish in preseason or, no, or the, I'll, I'll just i'll just say the fall in general well yeah I, 
that's a that's a good question where we're kind of in the middle of of maybe something different i'm always open as a coach i don't want to be stagnant i don't want to think my way is the best way i'm always open to be convinced differently and where i'm coming from now is i want to guide but i don't want to rule like a, a king or a dictator so those those goals are going to come from the guys. It's their team. I'm helping them run it. Like I, I, I'm pointing them in the right direction. So those things, if I'm, if I'm like dad saying like, this is what you need to think and this is how you need to think and what you need to view as important, then they just tune me out. So mm-hmm. part of the, you know, the time that we'll spend off the field is giving, giving the guys ownership for the team and let them set out those priorities themselves. I know what I, I value, and I, I, I'm, I'm a part of this team where I get to express that, but, uh, you know, and they can take it as like, okay, coach knows what he's talking about, or yeah, okay, I get where you're coming from, coach, but we're also all different people. And, uh, you know, how I view the game tends to be, uh, subdued, relaxed, thinking like uh, moving chess pieces, where some other guys are really into the emotional piece. And so they may need uh, goals that are, we want to accomplish this, this, and the other thing, where my focus may be more day-to-day. We just need to be perfect or, or striving to be per- perfect today. And then tomorrow, do it again. And then tomorrow, do it again. And if we do that, uh, hopefully we end up on top of the peak. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if not, I, my opinion would be that we'd end up closer to the peak. Then mm-hmm. if we set these goals and then we start feeling like we might be losing out on these goals and now we start slipping in our focus of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. But I'm good. also... I'm here. I'm here for a long. You know, hopefully, I'm here for a long term. So yeah. I, I think, I think over the years and how to maintain that culture over time, where uh, like the seniors, for example, are are trying to like uh, monitor short term success and what yeah. can they get now. And so we need to have conversations between, you know, what I'm looking for and what they're looking for, and how we can compromise into those. Uh, components. That's interesting. Did I talk in circles there? <laughs> no, no. Actually, that, that I mean, you talked my language. You know, <laughs> like if you're talking in circles, that's my language. Um, no, that that that's interesting. That you. That's interesting that you. That you give your team. So, so much. Input autonomy yeah 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 it, it, i mean yeah. these are smart kids that go off yeah. and you know do big things yeah. uh and you know i've always viewed this as like this time here is the time that's an intermediate time between being under your parents wing mm-hmm. and being totally on your own mm-hmm. and so this is the training ground to learn how to to be a leader when you mm-hmm. leave here and how to interact with your your peers in in the workplace or mm. or your wife or, or your kids yeah, and family yeah. in a productive way where you get stuff done instead of muddle in in the gray area because mm-hmm. communication is not great you mm-hmm. realize something needs to change but you don't know how to interact with it to make it change mm-hmm. you want to get buy in but you know that like as a dad if i say this is how it's going to work but there's some mm-hmm. disagreement there but it never gets voiced yeah uh there's no agreement, right? Yeah. There's just punishment, and yeah. it looks cold and sterile and, yeah. and, and and not loving. And so, yeah, I'm trying to operate where, you know, these guys are tight. But mm-hmm. in order to be tight, we all need to be on an equal playing field. And it's not yeah. me dic- dictating. It's me, you know, guiding and saying, well, we tried this before. It didn't work. Yeah. Uh, maybe look at it a different way. Or no, that that sounds like a very good concept. Go with it and stuff like that. You know, the, the reality too is that, right? These kids are like 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 
they're, they're not listening to not that they're not listening to adults but you know what they got they got their own like they know better you know they have their own they have their own thoughts about things they have their own ideas about things and you telling them is probably not the most efficient way of getting them to probably try to accomplish the same goals right ultimately it's about you want to win you want to do the best you can in your conference all those things you're you're all aligned on that it's just like you said that's really interesting that you don't no i don't i don't back yeah i don't back completely out i do provide a function my function is experience and wisdom so i i i need to win some of those uh situations and and when i mean when i mean my ideas need to come through as Mm -hmm. correct because there are some goofy or incorrect um ideas that come up that need to be defeated because they're not going to be successful that i i've i've seen that uh you know been tried and not be successful Mm -hmm. now why was it not successful well we can we can analyze that and figure out well those were a different group of guys with different concepts and, and you guys are better players or or our personnel is different so maybe this situation is different i'll give validity to that but i also have to make sure that it doesn't doesn't move into chaos either yeah. that it it you know it can often if you give too much autonomy to people who aren't uh aren't bought in to being open and listened and to evaluate it can turn into ultimate chaos and yeah. get make things worse. Yeah. So you have to have the right culture, I think, to, to be able to, to pull off what, what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, in those years, I think in my last interview, I said I had goobers. Yeah, yeah. I, did try, <laughs> I did try the concept of, uh, you know, allowing them to have input on things. And I backed away and it, it was ultimate chaos because... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody was thinking about themselves yeah. more than the team, team, and they wanted their input over everybody else's, yeah. and it it wasn't the best atmosphere. But yeah. now, now we're in a place where everybody's open, everybody respects each other, mm-hmm. they want to listen, and they want to figure out what's best yeah, instead yeah. of just uh, yeah. give their point of view. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, you're you're receptive to it, right? That's a big that's a big part of that, right? They res- you respect and all those things. That's because you're accepting of, again, whatever their opinions are, their, their, whatever goals they set out for themselves, you're respectful about it. Whereas again, I think if you come down as a tyrant, it doesn't feel that you would be accepting of ideas, but, um, Hey, what does your, what do you, what, could you just talk a little bit about your, your incoming freshman? I obviously don't get much information on, um, on on incoming classes and um but maybe you could sort of you know talk about them and i think probably more importantly like do you do you have an expectation that your freshman class is going to contribute during the regular season um yeah yeah i i guess one one of my philosophies would be and this might be boring for for you but uh (laughs) not trying to pick out one person and go well, this guy's going to be really good because yeah. uh, sometimes I'm wrong. <laughs> like I, 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 I have a joke with my wife where I, I recruited this guy. We got him late. He's graduated. But I, I, would com- I would think about him just over the course of the year before he showed up and would just go hunt to my wife. And I'd say the player's name. And that's all I would do. Like I was excited that he was coming in. <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, my wife now, and he, he was solid, but he wasn't like, I, I was elevating him. Like he was going to be, you know, a player of the year for division three. And and that, that didn't happen. So, uh, it, it really takes me getting into preseason to see like how they interact with our team. I, I, you know, I go into preseason uh, thinking that these guys are going to play mm-hmm. and then th- they have to show whether they fulfill that, uh, my thought for them or not. Uh, and it usually happens pretty fast, uh, because of how much, uh, 
you know, tight, confined space kind of composure and the speed of play we do, your technique has to be on point. Your positioning has to be pretty good. Um, so, yeah, we'll figure that out. But uh, I, I, when I'm recruiting, I, I, I'm thinking, okay, this guy's going to play. Maybe he'll start or maybe he'll come in and get good minutes. Mm-hmm. And this goes back to the, like the fitness piece is that uh, I, I try to think about having the strongest teams we'll have or when we have two teams deep mm-hmm. and that we have depth in positions where at least two guys are pretty close to equal. And this team that we have uh, this fall, I think might be the tightest team in terms of mm-hmm. ability, meaning mm-hmm. from top to bottom, uh, everybody's pretty close and it's not spread out mm-hmm. uh, in terms of this guy's really good. And this guy, um, yeah, not, not as much. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited about the depth of our team. Uh, and that also will help at the beginning of the season where, okay, maybe we're still like gaining full fitness, but I feel comfortable in our depth that I'm able to rotate guys through to be able to, uh, to maintain the that's huge, yeah. right? Because right? now you go from, yeah, I can put out 11 and I can tell them to go gangbusters for as long as they can. And then we can get guys on as needed. That's that's and without losing a step. Right. Because I always think that's that's the issue with with teams that are trying to get to the next level. They have 11 good guys. And then once they start making rotations then they don't quite fill that role. So um to be able to do that is, is I think critical for the, for the long term success. So, all right. On the other, on the flip side, I, I think I counted right the website. I don't know if I even count right, but um, you have seven seniors graduating or graduated as far as I could tell. And clearly three grad students that I think well graduated or are done. Their eligibility is done including one of my favorite goalkeepers in the, in division three last year, um, Xander Brett Lafarve. Yeah. Um, and, and probably the other guy who I just thought was just a rock star, Nate Cherendoff. So uh-huh. I guess, I mean, in your mind, and maybe you don't, you just sort of, okay, we're going to, it's good. Just teams just going to look different. Like, how do you, and, and that's not to dismiss your other seniors, by the way, I always, you know, I just, those are the guys I know and I regularly see, but, you know, I'm sure they all were big parts of your, your program. So but how, how do you compensate for guys like that not being around anymore? And probably not so much on the soccer field, which is interesting, but to me, you know, graduating classes tend to leave a void in the locker room from a leadership perspective and charisma and all that kind of thing. Like, how do you, how do you deal with that? Uh, you just you flow with it. it things always change. Um, I mean, you can look at Man City, mm-hmm. and Man City's a different team. If you watch them, uh, the first two games that they played, they're playing different. Uh, they have different components. They ha- now have a, a strong number nine to play with. Where they last two years, they won the league, and they didn't have a number nine. Uh, so they adapt and, and evolve into something different, but hopefully better or at least just as good um yeah i mean the guys we we lost are are gonna be losses to us mm-hmm. uh and now we're we're adding new guys and we'll see you know once they get into the mix here a couple of days of of what they bring to the table whether it's a an equal component to what we've lost or or a different component that makes us a, a, a little, hopefully a little bit better in some other ways mm. that you know um everybody has strengths and weaknesses hopefully we we try to manage those weaknesses but uh you know we could be bringing in guys that are stronger on those weaknesses of yeah. the guys we lost yeah. and uh you know then their weaknesses are different and we've we got to manage that yeah. so i i think yeah uh i think xander and and, and we also lost uh liam creeden who was a holding mid for us who was also a captain uh those were very strong guys in the locker room as well Mm -hmm. as on the field um and so for me 
that component stronger. It, it needs more attention than the on field. The on field follows that. Um, and, you know, I, I feel good about the talent that we have, um, but we need to, you know, we need to see, you know, how they gel with the other guys. And mm. I, I feel I'm pretty good that they will, but, yeah. you know, my evaluation is an evaluation of them apart from our guys. So, so I, I'm going to be wrong in, in some part of that evaluation. And then that's my job to, to mend it in some way. Mm -hmm. Make it stronger. Yeah, yeah. So, do you have in mind some upperclassmen who you think need to really step into that role of being the on-field leaders? And obviously, how confident do you think you are in in that happening? And I and I and I ask that question, knowing that I hate that nah, it's not a bad thing. Like you guys are a special breed. Like the the student athletes you get are much much different personality wise than a lot of other schools just because of the standards and the, you know, the type of school Johns Hopkins is. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think with leadership, it's such a tough one, but you get the same thing in terms of like, okay, his, his leadership qualities or scale. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into that uh, to be a good captain, to be a good leader. Uh, able to, you know, empathize with others, able to, you know, hold people accountable. And sometimes you have, you know, people who are real good at one, but not good at the other. Like the, the, the empathy person gets along and, you know, it, can we calm down, guys? And, and it doesn't really come with the confrontation. And then the confrontation guy is too much of a hammer, so nobody really <laughs> wants to speak to him. Yeah. But, it, you know, if you can find a way to blend those concepts together, then you start developing a really strong captain Yeah. who, you know, people respect and, and they know handles business and, and they follow. Mm -hmm. um, we still have Tim Trine and he's come back for a grad year uh, and uh, is a captain for us. Uh, we have Sam Martin, who is now stepping into the role. Um, who's, uh, you know, a great and strong individual and has both of those concepts, uh, mm -hmm. you know, intact. Um, <clears throat> and then we also are building what, you know, it's, I think this is a common term. It's not something I'm coming up with, but a leadership council where mm -hmm. we include some guys in to our meetings and, uh, and kind of push them towards uh, making some, you know, contributions or decisions on their own so we it's basically captains in training mm -hmm. uh so that when tim and sam kind of move on we have guys ready to step into the role, step into the role. Uh, yeah yeah but yeah they they are smart guys so you can kind of you know rationalize with them you can uh you know appeal to their intelligence and uh you know maybe build them faster i don't know uh, yeah into those uh positions yeah, yeah all right so you, you mentioned rowan because that's who you open up with you're at like combing and then you play mary washington and then suny Cortland and emory um easy schedule obviously right you know how intentional are you about that how intentional are you about scheduling clearly top non-conference teams and that's not to say anything about the team you know and in, in conference but just out of conference how intentional are you to try to schedule some of the best teams that you can find in the region very uh it, and and you learn that when you think you've had a pretty good season and you're biting your fingernails as to whether you get into the uh, ncaa if you don't win the tournament and uh, I mean, uh, the the last year, uh, 2021, it, I thought we had a strong schedule, but somehow <laughs> we ended up with uh, a, a strength of schedule that was weaker than the majority of our conference mm -hmm. or in region of, uh, teams. Um, so, 
yeah, we, you know, if we don't have our act together, we could be in a big hole to dig out of because we're we're dealing with such strong teams mm -hmm. in our first six games. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, if we don't have our act together, if we're stumbling around still figuring out things, uh, we're basically going to have to win our conference that to conference. be able to to make it to the tournament. Yeah. But hopefully that, that's not the case we'll, we'll be in. Uh, yeah. But we'll see. Those are tremendous opponents. Yeah. We hope, we hope we're hope we a tremendous opponent. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Rowan's at home, right? And it's at our place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then it's, you go to like homing and wash Mary Washington. And then you receive in SUNY Cortland and Emory. I would love yeah. to check out one of those games. Those are, those would be just fun. Maybe I'll see what I can do. I got so many, so many games I want to watch now. <laughs> like running the list. You're like, Oh, how can I be everywhere on September 2nd or September 1st? But, um, anyhow. Hey, well, I think those those teams will probably bring very you know different concepts to the table to have to tackle, which which should if we can get through it unscathed, we should be you know in a good place to yeah. to deal with uh, what's thrown at us afterwards. Oh, I, I mean, what I find interesting, and I didn't get a chance, although I will now um, since I um, since I interviewed Coach. Grenier at at, um, at Emory, like these, none of these teams are alike, right? Like you're, it's not just one gauntlet. It's it's six gauntlet, or f uh, f five gauntlets of different. You know, one's one's a sword, one's a battering ram, one's a. So you're dealing with these different styles of play, which. I think ultimately serves you well. It would be if you played the same type of team over and over again, that sets you up for failure down the road, I think. Right. Um, hey, la last question, and, and I'll let you get on to your to your day. The, the, I've been asking this because it is something I find interesting. Like what, from your perspective, what, what do you think? think is your greatest team challenge for the season and I'm not talking about opponents but like you know what where what are you afraid of that 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 the guys are going to show up I'm making it up like uh, oh they're they're if they're not in shape or they haven't done their summer workouts or you know the leaders that I expected to be leaders are not stepping up is there anything like that that you have on your mind Mm -hmm. mm, I, uh, I ask nah, only hard I think, questions. I mean, <laughs> I guess it would be we're bringing in we're bringing in a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. So uh, six underclassmen, three grad transfers. That's nine. Uh, one third of the team, basically. Uh, and so. Uh, how willing are they to to adapt to who we are instead of um, instead of kind of push their own agenda? Like, hopefully, mm -hmm. we've already uh, you know vetted that out to a degree, um, but uh, to fit in the culture, you need to. We're pretty deep into this concept of the style that we're playing, mm -hmm. and we want to move it towards perfection. Uh, it doesn't mean that this person doesn't have a voice, but um, sometimes you can get where, where individuals try to passively, or passive aggressively push their agenda, not by talking about it, but just well, working it out in training over and over again, going like, I think this is better. No. It's not. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, I guess that would be the, the concern is, you know, coming in, uh, the three of them are coming in from different programs. Uh, I, I, my guess is their programs don't play anywhere close to ours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just looking at it, I'd say that's correct. Um, <clears throat> but then we also have freshmen that have been taught by different people. 
Yeah. And so how how open are them are they to, you know, accept what we're talking about? And maybe, you know, again, they have their input. So maybe they they bring something that helps accentuate what we're doing. Uh, we're not closed off to listening and we, we set the right uh, arena so that they can express their thoughts and ideas. But, uh, you know, sometimes sometimes those uh, people are insecure. And so they, you know, kind of they, they hold on to their thoughts and never put it out on the table to be interacted with. Uh, and then on the field, that's where they try to put it out. But mm -hmm. It, it, that's no good. We want to talk about everything. We want to you get it all out there so that we're efficiently refining who we are, sharpening what we do, and, and you know, pointed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Very so good. That would be that would be the biggest thing that I, I mm -hmm. I'm concerned about. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense, right? Like, I think that's probably an annual concern for a lot of folks is how quickly can you incorporate this, what right, you said, like a quarter to a third of your team coming in every year and sort of trying to adapt to the, to the style. And you're probably right. I don't know the guys who are transferring in, but you definitely do play your own unique way of uh, of the game, which is personally I enjoy. So uh, hopefully they get on board as quickly as they can, right? Because you're right, there is certain, they learn a certain way and they think a certain way and then suddenly that's the only way, right? Like, it, you know, it's human nature. Yeah. But. but I mean, I guess just to define it more as I'm thinking of it, like there, there's, there's probably going to be one or two guys that are talented enough to start mm -hmm. as freshmen. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that's the case, they might feel like they have some a little elevated position on the team yeah. that allows them to yeah. go like, Hey, okay, I now yeah. I can strut my stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and you have to interact with that. You have to deal with that to go like, okay, yeah. now come back on the level terms with us. <laughs> Listen to what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, you're talented, but don't abuse yeah. Yeah. what you think that talent offers you on this. Yeah. Team. yeah. Otherwise, he's cleaning pennies. The the you know after every practice, right? Like it's like get back down to reality, I guess. Um, all right, coach. Hey, this was fantastic. Um, you set the record for the, one of these twenty twenty two, just like you set the record on the interview side on the simple coach coach interview. You set a record for the twenty twenty two previews. So love it, love it. Um, what? I wish you, I wish your men uh, all of the best. Um, i really looking forward to following you this season. Maybe do a live game or two, live stream. And, you know, I, I will definitely have to pull myself to go to, to watch you guys um, play in person. This is, you guys are too good not to. So, um, wish you all the luck. And, and, and thanks for, thanks for doing this today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And feel free, if you ever want to just call and talk about things, feel free to reach out. Oh, to oh you made a mistake right there. It's recorded. Yes. No, totally. I Believe me, there are times I'm like, oh, I should, I, again, I think through these things. I should just, I should just give you a ring. That would, that would be great. No problem.